to all of you. Once more, we meet. Uh, we we meet, and uh, uh, this time I'm going to talk about uh, my book, Art and Spirituality in the Yogi Culture Mantra. Uh, in one of my short videos, I've already mentioned about the topics that I've covered in it and the case study uh, on uh, the Hirapu Yogi Temple. And uh, as I've already mentioned, it talks about the transmigration of soul, uh, the Panjara lifestyle, and uh, the connection with the Panjara uh, community, and uh, Tantra, the history, and uh, also about uh, uh, the sacred geometry, the Yaksha cult, uh, you know, the dark side of Tantra, the misuse, uh, the blessings and the curse of the yoginis, uh, Chaucet Yogini, Namavali, Mantras, uh, and uh, also, I've talked about the Kundalini Awakening concept. There are also suggestions for uh, spiritual seekers like us, and uh, things like the vegan altars, the rituals, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the works of a vegan pantheist. Now, um, coming to uh, the another part, uh, which I've also like to mention. It took me three complete years to give a shape to this first book. Obviously, there were uh, content which had been written and getting accumulated in my laptop for a uh, number of years and then finally the thing started taking shape in the last three years and which I uh, actually uh, launched it on 29th May 2024. Very soon I will be taking out uh, the sequel to this book, uh, Art and Spirituality in the Universal of Mantra. This will be the first book. And second book is uh, it's coming out very soon and uh, I will also talk about the second book which has a lot of other aspects. It covers uh, the other yogini temples of India with the primary focus on uh, the uh, Mikala temple, the Baragha temple and uh, other temples of uh, central India. I have also touched upon the Hirapur yogini temple uh, and the uh, Chhanival uh, Temple and uh, it also, the book also deals with uh, Das Mahavidya. It talks about the Yogi cult, the various schools of Tantra, uh, whether it's Shaivite or uh, Shaktism or uh, the Vaishnava uh, uh, aspect. Uh, then uh, there are Jain and uh, Buddhist Tantra also. Now when it comes to Yogi cult, you cannot do without a pair. The divine masculine and divine feminine. They go side by side. That's how the Earth Nanishwar uh, concept comes in. Uh, the concept of Hera, which is very much relevant in uh, today's world when uh, there is so much of aggression all around. And now, as some of the uh, spiritual practitioners of uh, our times uh, say, you cannot stick to Om Namah Shiva or Om Vasudeva. Uh, you would have to chant uh, mantras which are. Uh, related to Hera and uh, when, uh, when the 64 yogini cult comes in, uh, Hera uh, will actually have the role to play because 60, there are 64 yoginis and from 64 yoginis there are 64 Hera's, uh, the pair of names and, uh, and then there are 11 Pudras, uh, that's also there. So there are a lot of other concepts and so my second book or the sequel to this particular book then it will be with uh, the Kalki Avatar, because uh, as uh, we, as we get to hear all around about the coming of Kalki and the golden age that we are yet to see, and uh, uh, for that we are preparing ourselves, and uh, a lot of us are actually uh, working towards uh, that goal, but in a different way. Each in a different way, we are working towards it, uh, towards that goal. Some would say light workers, some would say you know, spiritual seekers, and uh, maybe there are other names also. And uh, yes, we all uh, are trying to uh, get aligned with the energies of uh, Kalki. See, we are aware of uh, Krishna as an avatar. We have uh, heard uh, and read about his description in uh, Mahabharata, and we have des read about the description of uh, Ram in uh, Ramayana. And we have read about other uh, Vishnu avatar, uh, avatars, and uh, we have also read about uh, the Shiva avatars. But Kalki, uh, we have read in Kalki Puran, 
and uh, obviously there is some reference of Kalki Akhtar in uh, other texts also uh, but uh, we don't know how he actually be like when he comes in and uh, maybe it will be an essence uh, or maybe the energy will be such that uh, it will be getting translated in various uh, human beings maybe a lot of people will be having that kind of energy within them and uh, the, uh, I mean, the concept of Kali, uh, the Kali Yuk, uh, we talk about the Kali the demon. So uh, the characteristics of uh, Kali, uh, that's all around us. We see the incidents of events that are happening around us. We see it uh, uh, you know, in various forms uh, around us or within ourselves, in some form or the other. We see the characteristics of the Kali Yuk. Uh, we are entrapped in it or maybe uh, we are uh, steeped in that energy, we cannot come out of it. And uh, the only way to uh, get uh, released from that uh, energy is uh, obviously the, uh, you know, getting aligned with the energy that's actually drawing us towards uh, uh, the spiritual path and uh, maybe, maybe or and if you don't do it, we'll be forced to do it. This will not be very nice, I would say. What I would say is, so my second book is all about uh, that. Uh, and uh, also, uh, now, you know, there's in Bhavishamarika, as they say, I don't know, some of the uh, interpretations are like uh, that uh, the 64 yoginis will, uh, you know, get activated when Kalke comes up. Or when Kalke rises, the 64 yoginis will uh, the entire system for your business will get activated. Uh, so if that is so, then uh, there will be a lot of uh, destruction in the sense that uh, obviously when the evil will get destroyed, the uh, naturally there will be a lot of chaos, there will be a lot of uh, anarchy all around. One thing I find is that uh, nowadays uh, people are getting more and more aware of the system for your concept. And uh, now, yeah, and I would only say that uh, as my teacher had uh, uh, taught us, uh, I do uh, believe uh, in uh, invoking the six of yoginis. And yes, uh, if you are uh, believing in six of yoginis, you will be put to test like any other deities that you worship. But you have to have your patience and you have to be, uh, you know, Align with the energy of the humans. Uh, don't be afraid. The Matrikas will take good care of you. My suggestions to uh, the people who try to mess around with the uh, spiritual practitioners who uh, believe in the yoga concept is that don't mess around with them. Ultimately, you have to go to Don't bother them. I mean, don't harass them. You cannot. Uh, mess around with them who are the practitioners. If you do so, you will be harmed in the process because you don't know what is the origin for them. You might become successful after one or two black magic activity against them, but in the long run, you will get harmed. You know, that is something you should uh, keep in mind. You might think that, uh, okay, we will keep on doing till uh, and harm the person. Or maybe you might want to cast death spell. You might uh, want to cast accident spell on that person. And you keep on doing so. You might uh, try to uh, create abundance blocks. And you might actually go on doing uh, black magic activities uh, to you know, make those things happen. But you don't know that in the process you might be harming yourself. You might end up harming your family members, your children, or your those ones, whoever it is, so don't do it. Let them alone. Let them live in peace. Rather, focus on your own growth. Focus on your own self. Think about how you would uh, improve your own life rather than harming anyone. Whoever it is, whoever is doing so. So you're actually not, uh, you know, getting into a healthy competition. You're just getting into some kind of a cheap activity. So don't do it. I would say think about your own life. Do good to your own self. 
to your family members, to your spouse, to your uh, parents or parent-in-law, whoever is there. But uh, stop harming people. Stop uh, focusing on what anybody else is doing. Ultimately, you are going to harm yourself. Stop doing this. <laughs>